Welcome to part five in our glycolysis series. In this lecture, we will visit the final four reaction steps in the glycolytic pathway and focus on the pathway regulation at the pyruvate kinase step. Step seven of the pathway is the first kinase reaction that is working in the reverse direction than we are used to seeing. In this reaction, the phosphate is being transferred from 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate to a molecule of ADP to form ATP. The other product form is 3-phosphoglycerate. When ATP is formed through a kinase reaction, this is known as substrate-level phosphorylation. Note that the enzyme is named for the reverse reaction like other traditional kinase enzymes would be named. Perhaps it is more aptly thought of as an ADP kinase. However, this name is not descriptive enough, as we will see that other kinase enzymes can also preferentially mediate the reverse reaction and generate ATP. The other substrate then becomes important for distinguishing these enzymes from one another. Step 8 is a mutase reaction that rearranges the phosphate group from position 3 to position 2 of the substrate. This is similar to the mechanism used by phosphoglucomutase that can convert glucose 1-phosphate to glucose 6-phosphate. Thus, we will not spend further time on this reaction mechanism. Enolase is involved in step 9 of the glycolytic process, converting 2-phosphoglycerate to phosphoenolpyruvate. Enolase belongs to the family of lyases, specifically the hydrolyases, which cleave carbon-oxygen bonds. Note that this reaction is also a redox reaction. The next slide shows the reaction mechanism involved. Enolase is a highly conserved family of enzymes with five active site residues being especially important for activity. These include a critical lysine and glutamate residue that are directly involved in the reaction mechanism shown above. When the substrate 2-phosphoglycerate binds to the enolase, its carboxyl group coordinates with two magnesium ion cofactors in the active site. This stabilizes the charge on the deprotonated oxygen while increasing the acidity of the alpha hydrogen. Enolases, lysine residue, deprotonates the alpha hydrogen, and the resulting negative charge is stabilized by the resonance to the carboxylate oxygen and by the magnesium ion cofactors. Following the creation of the carbanion intermediate, the hydroxide on C3 is eliminated as water with the help of the glutamate residue and phosphoenolpyruvate is formed. Enolase detection is also being used diagnostically to help determine the presence and aggressiveness of astrocytoma brain cancer. Higher concentrations of enolase in cerebrospinal fluid more strongly correlated to low-grade astrocytoma than did other enzymes tested. The same study showed that the fastest rate of tumor growth occurred in patients with the highest levels of CSF enolase. The last step in glycolysis is catalyzed by the enzyme pyruvate kinase, which results in the production of a second ATP molecule by substrate-level phosphorylation. Similar to PFK1, this enzyme is also a key regulatory component within the pathway. The pyruvate kinase enzyme exists as a tetramer, that is built from the combination of different isozymes expressed in different tissues. There are three major isozymes of pyruvate kinase, the L-form that is predominantly found in liver, the R-form that is predominantly found in erythrocytes, the M1 form in muscle and brain, and the M2 form that is expressed in fetal tissue and at some level in most adult tissues. The L and R forms are splice variants that arise from the same gene locus. And the M1 and M2 forms are also splice variants that arise from the same gene locus. We will focus on some of the general regulatory mechanisms 
common to most of the isozymes of pyruvate kinase. Starting with the activator, fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. Because fructose 1,6-bisphosphate is an earlier product within the same metabolic cascade, the activation of pyruvate kinase enzymes by fructose bisphosphate is known as feed-forward stimulation. All of the isozymes, except for the M1 form, are stimulated by the binding of fructose bisphosphate to the enzyme. Similarly, all of the pyruvate kinase isozymes are inhibited by the product of the reaction, ATP, or high energy load, and high levels of alanine. Alanine can be converted to pyruvate in one enzymatic step. Thus, pyruvate serves as a metabolic intermediate in the formation of alanine. If high levels of alanine are present, this indicates that there is high energy load within the cell, such that the cell is full of building blocks to make new macromolecules and is not in the need for more energy. Thus, high levels of alanine serve as a negative regulator of the pyruvate kinase family of enzymes. The liver isozyme of pyruvate kinase is also regulated through protein phosphorylation, similar to the PFK2 activity of the PFK2 FBPase2 enzyme. The liver isozyme of pyruvate kinase is also downregulated during glucagon signaling. Protein kinase A phosphorylates pyruvate kinase inhibiting its activity and preventing the conversion of phosphoenopyruvate to pyruvate. Dual regulation of the glycolytic pathway during glucagon signaling helps to ensure that glucose resources will be diverted away from cellular use by the liver and released into the bloodstream to restore homeostatic blood glucose levels. Other sugars from the diet can also enter into the glycolytic pathway Galactose is converted in a four-step process to glucose 6-phosphate, and mannose can be converted to fructose 6-phosphate. Within most of the body's tissue, fructose can also be converted to fructose 6-phosphate by hexokinase. However, in the liver and kidneys, there is an alternative route that fructose from the diet can take to enter the glycolytic pathway. This pathway is concerning because it bypasses two of the major regulatory steps of the glycolytic pathway, the hexokinase step and the phosphofructokinase 1 step. Within the liver and kidneys, fructose can also be converted to fructose 1-phosphate by fructokinase. From there, another isozyme of aldolase, aldolase B, can cleave the fructose 1-phosphate into two 3-carbon units, dihydroxyacetone phosphate and glyceraldehyde. Dihydroxyacetone phosphate can be converted to glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate by triose isomerase, and then continue in the glycolytic cascade. Glyceraldehyde can be phosphorylated to glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate by triokinase. This is an unregulated system that can flood Krebs cycle with high levels of fructose entering the cell. For example, from high fructose corn syrup, sucrose, and other sweeteners common to the westernized diet. The excess pyruvate can then be shunted into fatty acid biosynthesis for long-term storage in the form of triglycerides. If this pathway is overutilized by consuming too much sucrose and high fructose corn syrup, this can lead to the development of hypertriglyceridemia or heightened increase of body fat. With this, we will end our discussions of glycolysis. In the next section, we will look at the complementary and opposite pathway of gluconeogenesis.